to start by just um, if you could, just put up your hand if you come from a regional area originally. Just let's have a look around the room. Alright, now keep your hand up if you came here to escape the regional area. <laughs>
manner. And it was often what it meant to be female. <laughs> if you cross any of those lines, there's a little bit and then your life is hell. And to give you an example, I was riding on my BMX home from school and a car was coming up behind me. I went over my shoulder and there is a youth, there is a kid from my class sitting in the passenger seat pointing at me and some adult who's beside him grabs the steering wheel and sees. Oh, I went up onto the sidewalk at that point and they followed me in the ute to try and hit me with a car, with a motor vehicle, when I was 13 years of age. That for picking books, that for not trying to sport, that for not holding my wrist stiff enough. And of course, all these things were sissy and female and gay at the same time, because of course, all of that is the same thing to these people. But it's not their fault, because that's what they're taught. And the worst ones are always the ones with their own issues. It's always the ones with their own issues. I can name two different friendships that lasted a couple of years that formed when I actually managed to get to talk with the person who was trying to punch my head in. Because when people grow up in a culture of violence, where violence is the primary mode of communication and of being, then if you like someone, you hate them. And that's part of a big way of the way that a person who is disturbed by the fact that they find someone who is in any way gender diverse at all attractive as a friend or as a potential romantic or sexual partner, well, they react doubly with violence because that's where the intersection comes in. It's not just about you know, uh, an additive, it's a multiplier. It's that, it's that moment where a problem becomes ten times worse, not twice as worse. Now, things are a bit better. In fact, improved. I've done all my part. And certainly when I first came to Armadale, well, everywhere I went, the bullying, the violence was always there. But now in Armadale, as long as I don't go into any of the drinking establishments, the one place that's safe, I can wander around and maybe I'll get a comment. Maybe a, are you a boy or a girl? Because that's as far as the violence has happened to me in the last 10 years. People I know, who went to the wrong pub, who spoke to the wrong person, that's not the same. And there's definitely a problem with lying still in our style. But it's, it's better, and it's definitely better. But it's better because I've been wandering around wearing lipstick for a few years. It's better because a few other people have been doing the same. But where we have such a pressure of exodus, of fleeing, if you can afford to flee, of course, you're poor if you live in a regional area. Almost entirely, you are poor. And you're comparatively poor. If you are the, the child of someone who's a wealthy businessman in, in Ghana or Glen Innes, you are poor compared to someone who's the child of a low-level businessman in, in Blacktown. 